Hey everybody, welcome back to Taking Trades. So I've got a winner for you today. In today's video, I'm going to show you the live recap, the live trade that I filmed on AMD, a little over $1,000 winner. Really happy with that. It was 2.5 R, so it made up for a couple losses I had earlier in the week. So I'm going to go over where I am in the week in terms of total R's collected. And I'm also going to play this video for you so that you can see this morning's trade and how it played out. Um, this morning was super active. We had a lot of bullish activity in AMD. And if you're new to the channel, um, I only trade AMD. I know that sounds really odd, but it's a very liquid stock. I get this question a lot in the comment section. They ask, people ask, why do you only trade AMD? And it's just simply because it's a super liquid stock. And when I say liquid, I just mean there's a lot of buyers and there are a lot of sellers. It makes the bid ask spread really, really tight so that you can get in and get out very quickly, which is key in day trading, especially in scalping, because today's trade only took about four minutes. I guess some people would argue with me and say that that's not a scalp, but I just call it a scalp because it's just a fairly quick trade. Um, really nice price action this morning. I thought I was gonna get stopped out, and I held and obviously didn't touch my trade. So the focus of this video is gonna be how important consistency is. Consistency with following your trade plan, not giving up on it when you start to get scared like it's going to go against you, sticking with the plan even when your back's against the wall and you think you're about to go under because you never know. You might get the bounce, might move right back in your favor, which is what happened in today's video. So I want to show that to you right now. So let's go ahead and jump in. So you can see I've got interactive broker set up, and yes, people have been asking if the interactive broker platform setup video is coming, and it is coming very soon. Um, it'll be out this week, so stay tuned for that. Turn on your bell notifications. That way you don't miss it when it comes out. So you can see right here, we're watching this, and let's actually flip over to the actual chart. You can see that at 9.15, 9.30, we got this red candle that came in, and what you're seeing is that red candle came in after three decent green bars. So it was encouraged because even if we get a pullback before AMD goes higher, that pullback might be enough to give me my 75 cents. My current risk is 30 cents. So I carry a 30 cent stop loss looking for a 75 cent take profit target. 2.5 to one is my reward to risk ratio, as many of you know, but if you're new, I'll catch you up on that. Now you can see this candle at 915 right here went red and it hung up higher for a while and then right before the open it sort of lurched down a little bit. So I was just kind of watching it to see what it was going to do. It ended up giving this little bit of a wick at the bottom and the low on this is 79.75. So I like to go, and this is just my preference because of my back testing, I like to go 10 cents below that low for my order. So I did that. I put it at 79.65 and then got triggered. I always go short, never long, and that's just because my metrics have told me that my short trades are wildly more successful than my long trades, so that's why I do that. Let's jump into the video. Okay, so with this video, you're gonna see sort of that same setup. Here's that red candle, and I'm gonna hit play, and what you're gonna see is a, a nice fill I almost got filled on that wick that just spiked out right there. It pushes up, just kind of hanging and waiting. Couldn't really get any momentum to the upside and a very crisp, very fast fill at 79.61 and change. So I'm just gonna watch this thing, gonna see what starts to develop. And I notice that it gets kind of an initial quick push down. Now I'm gonna pause this for a quick second because if I saw 79.25 come up on the tape here, I was gonna move my stop loss to break even. I always move to break even after I get 40% profit. That is sort of, over a lot of back tests, I've found that if I go 40 cents and I don't move to break even, a lot of times if it starts to backtrack on me, it's not worth going beyond break even. It always ends up in a one R loss when it moves beyond my break even point. So at 40 cents, I move to break even and then I go from there. So right now, if I back this up, just wanna check one thing. Okay, so 79.62, okay, so I'll keep playing this. I've seen that 79.25, so I'm gonna go ahead and move my stop loss. I hit confirm. 
So now my stop loss is right around my break even. I actually think it's a penny or so behind it. And now I'm just waiting. And the thing that really got me today was you can see that this came all the way down to 93 and my take profit targets at 86. So we were talking seven cents from my target and now it's backtracking. Now the old me might have said, you know what, I don't want to miss this profit. It was so close and now it's backtracking, I'm just going to take it off. But I didn't do that because I either need to win or lose. I need to keep my metrics solid. And I was starting to sweat it right here. I really thought it was going to go green and head higher. But I just kept watching, just kept hanging with it. And you can see it just keeps hovering and bouncing around. It's just not really fully committed yet to either direction. But it's showing a long lower wick. This long wick shows buying pressure, which I don't want to see. I want to see selling pressure. Then it starts to push down again. But it just kind of keeps hanging. And this whole thing took about about four minutes, just a little over four minutes. I keep watching it, waiting for like one more little flush to the downside to see if I could get uh, some initial shares off, cover those. And you're gonna see when I do get triggered, I get a partial fill, it hovers, and then it pushes again and I get the remainder of my fill. And you'll see that here in a second. But keeps threatening the upside. This makes anyone sweat. I get why day traders fail, because a lot of day traders would take this trade off right here. And the problem with that is, if you take this off for a one hour winner and you lose tomorrow, you're now break even instead of having profit on the game for the week. You need outsized winners. There you go, there's my profit on 200 shares. And then it kind of just hangs and then pushes down and there was the full fill. It was a really nice final fill. So a really nice red bearish candle. And to get back to what I was saying, if you, Take a 1R winner and you take a 1R loser, you're break even. If you keep doing that, if you catch a cluster of losers, it's hard to gain back ground. But I can lose multiple days in a row and then have one winner and that winner will wipe out all those losers. You have to be taking two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. I think that's the biggest, hardest concept for new traders to understand is you pick a strategy you stick with it, you create rules and, and guidelines around your strategy and you don't change them ever, 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 ever until you have a hundred or so trades accumulated so that you can look at the data and you can upload that data to something like TraderView.com, which there's a link in the description and in the YouTube banner for TraderView.com. It'll help support the channel. Go ahead and check that out. I'll plug that real quick. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that you're having outsized winners and very small losers. And if you can control that, you can continue to be profitable if your strategy shows that it wins 40, 45, 50, 55% of the time. So given that, now that the video is over, I'm gonna flip over to the real chart, to my live uh, trading platform with IBKR. And you can see that we did push down. One thing I always check after the trade's done later in the day is I come back and I always wanna see that the candle moved beyond where I took profit. If the candle's just hitting my take profit and then retreating fully, if I see that as a theme, I start to think, okay, maybe my, maybe my take profit is actually too big. But what I've seen over the last probably 50 trades is that anytime I do get a full winner, it moves beyond my target. There's more to the downside, which I like to see. It's kind of like a little safety padding. It tells me that I'm in the right spot, that I'm not just trying to bottom ticket. I'm just taking profit, getting a meet, the meat of the move, and then it goes beyond me a little bit, and I'm totally good with that. So that's what happened today. Um, not, you know, it, it pushed down and and just kind of just had a weak day, and then and then had a nice bounce. So right now AMD is sort of bouncing and is now just kind of flattening out. So we'll see what it does the rest of the day. But let me show you my trades here. Um, let's look at the short position. So you can see right here. Um, these are my exchanges I went through and you can see what I paid in commissions. Yes, I do pay commissions. I don't trade for free. I can't deal with the delays and the sloppiness of some of the platforms, specifically Thinkorswim, that doesn't charge fees but cost you a lot of money and losses when you get weird delays and issues where price action is jumping your stop loss. I can't deal with any of that, so I pay commissions and I'm very happy about it. My fill, you can see I got my uh, 
yeah, when we bought to cover, yeah, we got the first fill of 200 shares here. Then it filled me um, to 1,100, then 100, and then, it was out, then we were out. So um, really nice fills. And the summary right here, 1,400 share sell, 1,400 share cover. My average sold price was 79.61 and change. Paid a $14.08 commission, and the realized P&L after commissions have come out, $1,036. So really excited about that. Really big day. I do want to catch you up on the remainder or the previous few days. On Monday, came right out of the gate with about a two-second trade. Triggered in, immediately stopped out. Video wasn't even worth watching. So took a one-hour loser on Monday. Tuesday, came out, stayed in the trade maybe 30 seconds, and then got stopped out. Down 2R. And this is a perfect example of what I'm saying. Monday loser, Tuesday loser, Wednesday winner, and now I'm green for the week. I'm up a half an R. So if I add that half R to last week, I'm up 4.5 R on the month, and we're only a third of the way through the month. So this could be an exciting month. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll see how things play out, see how AMD behaves. But as long as I stay consistent and I don't introduce any, any humanness to my trades. I just make them mechanical. I don't get emotional and take profits early. I don't take a small loser instead of a full loser. I just keep everything the same. I either lose one unit I either you know, or win two and a half units or I scratch the trade. Now, there will be days where I don't get to take a trade. Like I don't get triggered. It happened last, um, let's see, it happened last Wednesday and Thursday. I didn't even get triggered into the trade. And that's totally fine. It went long. I only trade short, so I didn't get activated in that trade. But then Friday, picked up a nice winner to finish off the week. So that's exactly what happened with AMD. It was a really nice move to the downside. We'll look for continuation tomorrow. Um, it, it, it's just depending on, on the volatility and, and what's going on. Today's action was nice because once it pushed, it just seemed to hang and it didn't make me sweat as far as it didn't push down and then immediately retreat back into red and hang in that red zone. It gave me a green, and then I kind of just stayed green most of the trade. It just hung and then dropped. Once I see that drop, it'd be interesting to be able to measure the, the percentages on. When you get that first sort of chunky drop, what percentage of those trades become winners? Because they seem to very regularly, you start to feel like, oh, this might be a winner, this could be a winner. Um, and today felt really good once I got that, that big push to the downside. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. If you haven't joined our free Facebook group, come join over here. Check that out. Uh, the, the link is in the banner of the YouTube channel. It's also in the description of the video. You can check that out. Sign up for a TraderView account. Again, hit the description or the YouTube banner for the TraderView account. And um, if you have any questions, leave them below. And yes, the IBKR setup video is coming soon. Stay tuned. Turn on your bell notifications. And I appreciate you stopping by. I'm going to see you next time. Mm -hmm.